The 25th Hour Radio Show. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the 25th Hour Radio Show. I am your host, Rob Fairless. On the phone with me today is astrophysicist and scientist with NASA's Heliophysics Science Division, Dr. Lika Guhathakurta. Dr. Guhathakurta, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Guhathakurta is joining me today to discuss the much-anticipated North American eclipse that will be occurring August 21st, 2017. Uh, Before we get into that, though, can you give me and my listeners a little background information on yourself? What was your initial inspiration on studying and getting into the career field that you're actually in? Well, astrophysics is something I probably was always fascinated by, simply like any young child or any person looking at the night sky, looking at the stars and just wondering. It is just that wonderment. You know, what are these objects in the sky and why do they twinkle and why are their shapes and colors different? And so I think that was the very beginning. And from there on, I became very interested in the more deeper sort of metaphysical questions of life that I think even within NASA, an organization that pursues really hard science, it is at the very uh, basis of that, you know, uh, where did we come from? Where did life begin? And we are kind of peeling away into those questions and we are at a point uh, where we begin to think of Big Bang and that could be just again one point in time, you know, as we talk about our own universe, now there are concepts of multiverses, but as a child, these were science fictions and these were metaphysics to me. I think all of this put together made me just wonder and get into the field of physics and then astrophysics. So for someone like me who is completely unaware, what exactly is heliophysics? Huh. It's a very good question. I mean, simply because heliophysics, I don't think, was a discipline quite the way we have established it today. It's a brand new discipline that I would say came into existence about um, 10 years ago on our solar cycle, which is 11 years ago, and uh, where we really stitched together many different disciplines like solar physics, like magnetospheric physics, like ionospheric physics, to create a discipline really that connects the sun to the outer atmosphere of a planet, the planetary environment that is really modulated by sun's magnetic field and radiation, slightly different from climate. So each planet responds to that depending on its outer Layers, you know, whether it has a magnetic core or not. So heliophysics is the system science of the sun and its interaction with the interplanetary medium and the very outermost atmosphere of planet. And that's why you're the perfect person to be joining me today uh, to talk about next year's eclipse. First question here on this is, why is it being heralded as the great North American eclipse. I mean, are we the only continent that will be able to see the eclipse? And is that a relatively rare occurrence for North America? I think it is pretty rare. Uh, Total solar eclipses in general is a rare phenomenon occurring about every 18 months or so. And then such eclipses, total solar eclipses, um, does not, occur over the same land mass in about 300 years or so. So you can imagine that in any given spot, uh, a total solar eclipse is going to be a rare event. Now, why is this particular? So the last time we had a total solar eclipse over a very narrow land mass in um, North America was in 1979, very small region. But the total solar eclipse that is going to happen next year on 21st of August is actually across the entire 
middle belt, coast to coast, from Oregon to South Carolina. Something like this hasn't happened in almost a hundred years. The last time this happened was actually in 1918. So, you, it, and, and now, if you sort of couple that with, you know, the new technology we have in hand today, uh, the younger generation, for example, with social media, with digital equipment, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a transformative event, I think. I mean, uh, probably between 300 and 500 million people will observe some aspect of this eclipse, if not the totality. Now, when you say solar eclipse, there are different types of eclipses, right? What exactly is a solar eclipse? So solar eclipse is the situation where you have the moon come between the sun and earth, and they're perfectly lined up and in the same plane. And depending on the distance of the moon from the sun, I, I call this an elliptical cosmic dance. So both our planet Earth goes around the sun uh, in an orbit that's not circular, but slightly elliptical. Very similarly, the moon goes around the Earth uh, in an orbit that's slightly elliptical. Furthermore, the plane of the moon, that orbital plane and the plane of the Earth around the sun are slightly inclined uh, with each other. And that's why this phenomenon uh, happens more rarely, not every month during a lunar eclipse, uh, or during a new moon when the moon comes in between the sun and Earth. So when all these conditions are met, they are in the same plane, and the moon is at a distance, you know, where it can completely cover the bright disk of the sun. That is when you have totality, because that is the moment when we are able to see the outer atmosphere of the sun, called the corona, something that we cannot see at any other time with unaided eyes, because it's a very dim glow. The brightness of the corona is sort of similar to a full moon brightness. So if there is even a speck of the brightness from the sun that appears, then you cannot see totality. So the sun has to be blocked by the moon 100% for us to see the total solar eclipse. And that's the difference between a total solar eclipse versus a partial solar eclipse, where you might see crescent, for example, or you might see an annular disk of the sun, depending on, you know, how far the moon is from Earth. It's, it's all about geometry. You know, typically, uh, the, you know, the angular size, the apparent angular size of the moon and the sun in the sky is sort of the same. And, and not everyone in North America will get to see the, the total beauty of the eclipse, right? You have to be lucky enough to, to live or be located in a certain path across North America to witness the full effect. Am I correct on this? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there, there are close to 12 states that will go through this path of totality. And I would say uh, about two of these states are kind of going to see it. You know, it's a glancing look at the totality because they are almost at the outer edge of that central band. And, and so uh, going from Oregon, essentially, to South Carolina, and if you can draw that map, and if you do a Google search on Eclipse 2017, you know, you are going to see many, many maps on the website. And NASA will be putting out its own website, um, you know, we'll unveil it one year from the eclipse on 21st of August this year. So you can see it from, you know, Oregon, a certain spot from Idaho, like Snake River Valley, Wyoming, uh, you can see it from Nebraska. So you can see all these states, Missouri, Illinois, absolutely. And Illinois, one thing special about Illinois is that I call that the eclipse 
hot spot. Because there's going to be another eclipse in seven years, April 8, 1924. And Illinois is at the cross section of both these eclipses. I mean, it is absolutely there. Now, you know, even though it's still over a year away before the actual eclipse, it's such a big deal in my southern Illinois area. You know, it's already all over the local news outlets. Apparently, our area, you know, of Marion and Carbondale is home to the greatest totality of the eclipse, and it's expecting to have thousands of people visit our area on that day. Have you yourself ever been to the optimum viewing location for an eclipse like this, and can you describe the feeling of witnessing it? I I have actually been to nine total solar eclipses, you know, as far away as Mongolia to as remote as the Libyan Sahara Desert, so under different sort of climatic conditions and viewing conditions. Um, The very first solar eclipse I saw was in June of 1991, one of the longest eclipses from La Paz, California. It is absolutely an awe-inspiring moment. That is all I can say. Uh, You know, the... First of all, that's why, you know, everything around you kind of becomes dark and this this strange glow appears even in the twilight. And when the last speck of sunlight disappears from the valleys of the moon, you, know, you see this uh, ethereal beauty, actually, it is this poorly yellow, uh, shimmering corona, and it almost looks like an eye in the sky, you know, with the dark pupil. It, 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 is, um, it is one of those cosmic phenomena uh, uh, that uh, can be observed only from this planet, I think. Now, for everyone who is lucky enough to view the eclipse, it's really not wise to stare right into the eclipse without some kind of protection, right? Uh, do, you, do you know what type of protection is suitable for viewing something like this? Absolutely, and I think you have to wear uh, filtered glasses. There are eclipse-protected filtered glasses. There again, we, are, we NASA will be recommending some website, you know, where you can probably procure some of these glasses. These have been in the market before, um, so eclipse glasses are mandatory for viewing all phases of the eclipse except when the totality occurs. If you're wearing eclipse glasses, then you will not be able to see the corona. The corona is so faint that the eclipse glasses will block that. So it is only after the last speck of sunlight has disappeared that you observe the totality phase of the sun's outer atmosphere without glasses. And it is really important to have people who can maybe call it out for you. And if there is absolutely any issue, uh, the recommendation is do not look at the sun uh, without aid. So I'm sure as the date approaches, more and more people will be reporting on this. Do you have an online presence like on social media like Twitter or Facebook where people can visit to get your thoughts on celestial events that occur throughout the year like this? So I have both Facebook and Twitter, and I think NASA will be engaged very much in uh, doing, you know, uh, tweeting and Facebook, and we will have a website, as I mentioned, Mm -hmm. which will be unveiled on 21st of August this year, where you will be able to get all of this information. So there's going to be a lot uh, going on. Yeah, this and is a, this is a very a, big deal, right? I mean, this is a huge deal for North America. This, this, I think this, this is a transformative event for North America. I almost want to say that, you know, 100 years from now, we will be looking at a generation that is post and prior to the eclipse. If you think of science education, for example, for people who don't believe in science, this, this, this is going to change people's thinking. It's simple geometry, the cosmic phenomenon. You uh, 
see, you know, the sun's outer atmosphere. We predicted this. We know it second by second when it's going to happen. This is the technique that we use to find exoplanets, planets around other stars. And then, so this has a way of also enlarging into the larger sphere of time. And Dr. Guhatha Kurta, is there anything you'd like to mention that I failed to bring up or didn't cover about this event or anything else that might be of interest to my listeners before we start to wrap things up today? I, I think I would urge, especially uh, for school age children to sort of, or the teachers to start paying attention to hands-on activities for the eclipse to prepare them. This is going to happen during summer in some cases. Schools will open in some cases, they won't. But it could be really important, you know, starting from this fall to prepare the students and their parents for this upcoming event. And I would say anyone who can make that trek to the central line to see the totality really ought to make that trek. It's a lifetime opportunity. And let's cross our fingers wherever you are, it's not cloudy that day, right? Absolutely. <laughs> well, Dr. Guhartha Curta, once again, thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to join me on the show. It's been my pleasure, ma'am. Thank you very much. Radio Show.